smart homes should make our life easier. But should it also be more efficient? Today is the first video in a four parts series where I will be covering various energy related topics. In today's video we will be talking about the electricity and what can smart home do to us to help us be more energy efficient. We'll start in a couple of seconds. This video is a first video in fourth part video series where I will be covering various things around energy saving in your home with a smart home or home assistant. In this first video, as I've mentioned previously, I will be talking about the electricity. In the second video in the series, we will be talking about the heating and how you can either optimize or improve or lower cost of your heating while still retaining some kind of a quality of life in these troubling times. In the third video, I will be talking about my new heat system, which I still don't know was it a good investment or not, but I had to do it. And in the fourth part of this series, I will be covering home or apartment use of solar energy. And yes, I'm really looking forward to that one. It's still in the works. So I don't know if it will be a good or a bad video, but I wanted to talk about this topic too. So let's talk about the energy or electricity use in your home. There are various types of devices that consume electricity in your house. And the lights, these two bright reflectors shining at my face, are unfortunately not the most power hunger devices your home has. But they are the most visible ones. If there are no lights, you don't see, you break your leg. If there are lights, you wonder if you are just wasting your energy. So let's look at a couple of automations I am using at my house to improve quality of life on one hand, but also to save a bit of energy or electricity cost if I can. There are a lot of light bulbs in my apartment. While some are smart, or most of them are smart, meaning that I can turn them on or off individually, or also select the brightness, for some I can even control the color temperature. And then there are of course the LED strips, also smart ones. Everything is hooked in Home Assistant and I can control every single light bulb in my apartment. Well actually there are I think two light bulbs that I cannot control in the apartment and unfortunately at this point I still cannot do anything about it. But the energy cost wasted or used on the light bulbs is unfortunately just a minor portion of your overall electricity cost, especially if you are using the LED bulbs. If you are using some other light sources than the LED lights, then this may not be the case for you. So let's look at a couple of automations that I used every day in my home. First automation that my family likes the most is the kitchen lights. We live in an open space apartment, meaning that on the lower floor we have living room, dining room, kitchen that is more or less open space. There is a small bar dividing the dining room between the kitchen, but whatever happens in the kitchen can be seen from the dining room and living room. Also there are a lot of windows, but my family likes it bright, meaning that the first thing that anybody used to do in the morning was turn on all of the lights in the kitchen and they were usually left turned on for the whole day until we were going to the bed. What I did, I installed the motion sensor. In this case, this was a Shelly 1 motion sensor and with the Shelly motion sensor, I'm controlling lights in the kitchen. Let's look at a couple of automations that I'm using just for that. First automation that is used is the kitchen motion daylight on. When kitchen motion changes from off to on, and this is the Shelly motion sensor, and the luminosity is below 320, timer is cancelled. And this is a crucial moment in this automation. And yes, I'm also using timer. And the last step, of course, is to turn the kitchen light on with predefined maximum brightness level. My intention was to use separate automation for the day and for the night. But it looks like all the family members have agreed that in the kitchen they want all the lights when needed at 100%, no matter if it's day or night. So that's why I have a single automation. 
I did mention timer. Why is timer crucial? Timer is triggered after there is no more motion in the kitchen. And no, I do not control the lights in the kitchen directly with the motion sensor. Instead, when the motion is no more detected, it starts the timer. Duration of this timer is 2 minutes. And why did I resolve to use timer instead of just opting out for the motion detection? Well, for example, somebody can stand in the kitchen, work on something, and the sensor may not trigger those minor movements. Because usually that doesn't last more than a minute or two, that's why I have timer that is triggered after the last motion was detected, or after the motion is no longer detected. If there is a new motion, as we've seen with that automation previously, this timer is cancelled. When the motion sensor changes to off, the timer starts. And of course we finish everything with the when timer finished, event is fired, meaning the timer has run out, we turn off kitchen lights. The second light that I want to talk about in this video is my stairs lights. We have, as I mentioned, open space apartment and the stairs are also open. When it's night, you really cannot see anything and since the stairs are so open and have almost none protection, you really want to be careful during the night. What you had to do, you had to turn the overhead light and it was really bright. So what I did, I also installed one additional sensor, this time it's a Akara motion sensor and I'm using it to control the LED strip that's mounted under the stairs and it's shining bright against the stairs and the wall. This automation is triggered every time there is a motion detected on one of the two motion sensors, Akara motion sensors. When the living room motion occupancy changes from off to on, but I have one further condition. And it's after midnight and before 6 a.m. in the morning, we once again trigger the timer start and we turn on the stairs lights. And of course, when the timer event is fired, finished event is fired, we turn the stairs lights off. Let's now look at the third example in the light control. And this is, uh, I wouldn't say more complex, but it has various levels of automation here. And this automation has been running since the first day I installed Home Assistant at my home. And I, at that time, already had trad free lights, uh, LED bulbs and a hub. So this was the first integration and the first use case for any lights in my apartment with the home assistant. This automation is called turn on the light when the sun sets. I have one similar in my younger daughter's room, which triggers this goose light. And yes, it's a pretty big goose that sits on the floor and that also acts as a night light. The living room automation for the lights is triggered every day when the sun sets, but it has offset of negative 40 minutes. One additional thing that this automation has and most of the other automations also have is to check if there is a person at home or not. And I really do recommend that you use this. This can be set up very easily by using the binary sensors and the people sensors. So this automation will be triggered every day but if there is at least one person at house. So that means that no energy is wasted if we are not at home. First thing it does, it runs the notify script. This script, again every day, is sending me a message that the sign is setting and it's turning lights on. Why this is still here, I don't know. At first I use this as a debugging tool to be sure that the automation has run or not. After the automation has run, then I have the second event. It turns on the living room lights. And the last thing is this script, evening light speech, that is also run every night or every day. And it just gives a random text message, like this one here. Another day has passed and the evening has arrived. Okay, this is very simple. And I was a little bit sneaky with this one. The problem with the kitchen lights was also the same with the living room lights. My wife would just turn all of the lights on. So I said to her, don't do it manually, I will create automation for it. And here I managed to create some kind of offset when the lights will be turned on or off. 
And off is also one of the other automations I've created because previously when I still had some spare time and didn't create YouTube videos while also working at day job, yeah, I had time and I used to watch TV. And what would frequently happen is that I would simply fall asleep in front of the TV. And around 2 or 3 a.m. I would wake up, the lights were still on, the TV was still on, or it went to sleep, but the lights were still on. So one of the next automations that I created is the midnight automation that shuts down all lights. But before midnight, I also have one notification plus control of the lights. Let's look at that one. Yeah, I'm not good with thumbnails or the titles. And this can be seen by the number of views my videos get. So I also have one automation that's called Almost Midnight because it runs every night at 23.30. We have also one additional condition and this is to confirm that there is somebody at home because we do not want to run this automation if nobody is at home. If there is somebody at home and if it's 11.30 p.m., we turn off kitchen lights, ceiling lights and dining room lights. The only lights remaining on the downstairs floor, at least at the time I created this automation, were the living room lights. The next thing is the notification. This is text notification that is pushed to my webOS LG TV. And because of that, I really love LG because I can push text messages, warnings and notifications on the screen in a small window. And the last thing that is played is this almost midnight speech. But then there is also one additional automation. That automation is called Midnight Lights Out at 23, 59 minutes and 59 seconds or just one second before the midnight, this automation is triggered. Once again, it's checking if there is somebody at home or not. And then we do a bunch of stuff. First, we run this script, Midnight Lights Off Speech. It just tells you, bye bye, I'm going to sleep, you should go also. It turns all of the lights in the apartment. And why all lights? The previous almost midnight automation did shut down all the lights on the lower floor except the living room lights. But since kids and my wife are already probably upstairs and probably my younger and older daughter are already in the bed sleeping, this time I want to make sure that if any of them, once again as their dad, has fallen asleep with the lights, all the lights will be shut down. Next, we send a notification once again to the WebOS LG TV saying midnight lights out. Then I also receive message on my mobile phone. It says that it's this date and this time and it's turning all the lights out. I also have two input booleans that are turned off. One input boolean turned off is the speech notifications because I want to make sure that after midnight I don't hear any verbal notifications out of my home. The second input boolean that is turned off is a boolean that is reset every midnight and it says that I am ready to play morning routine. And after the morning routine is played, this input boolean is turned on, so each midnight I reset it. Ok, these were my automations that can help you optimize your lights and I really do hope that some of the ideas or some of the things that I've implemented in my home and these are not the all automations I have in my home can help you out. There is one additional notification that I've mentioned in my SwitchBot video for the contact sensor and that's my older daughter. Let's look at the automation specifically made for her. This one is called Luca Light Off When Away. When she leaves home zone, we turn off all lights in her room. It's a very specific automation. It triggers only when one person leaves the specific area. But yeah, no matter how much I tried, I unfortunately couldn't teach my daughter to turn the lights off in her room. This is why I have this automation to be a fail-safe because I failed as a parent. If you are interested in any of these automations, all of those automations are kept in the YAML file. And all of those files, all of my main home setup YAML files are available on the GitHub and they are yours to take, use and they are free of charge. 
The link to my GitHub repository, as always, will be in the description of the video. But now let's talk about other devices, because yeah, lights we can see, but lights are not the ones that are consuming most of the energy. For example, you can see that out of almost 600 watts my apartment is currently using, I only spent 41 watts on the upstairs light and 11 watts for the downstairs light. And by the way, if you're interested in graphs like this that can help you visualize the power consumption in your home, there are two things that you can use. One is the power calc automation from the HACS, and I will be leaving once again a link here. And the second thing is data visualization, and I also created video on that. So the link to that one will be also up here. Let's talk about dishwasher, washing machine and your dryer. These are the three devices that unfortunately consume most of the electricity. Unless you are also heating on the electricity, running AC or using electric stove or oven. Those can be really power hungry devices. First, let's look at the freezer and the fridge. As you can see here, I've added temperature sensors in my freezer and fridge. Unfortunately, the temperature here still haven't fallen down enough like they should be, but it's good for this video. Let's look at fridge and freezer automations. I have created a couple of energy related automations. First one will be freezer is getting warm. It's same or almost same as this fridge, so I will not be opening this one. Freezer getting warm can be useful not to save energy, although it will save energy if you forget the door. But for that one we have additional automation. This one will be triggered if the temperature in the freezer goes above minus 14 degrees centigrade. Why would this happen? Maybe the fuse has blown or it was tripped or triggered. The second thing, maybe somebody by accident disconnected or removed the fridge or freezer from the plug power outlet. That way you wouldn't have idea that your freezer is not connected. And here we are not talking about the energy cost, here we are talking about the food cost, because your food can get spoiled. This automation is used just for that. It would warn you if the temperature goes above minus 14 degrees for the period longer than 2 minutes. Of course, you can use whatever values you want to use and what you think will work for your home. If this happens, we send a notification via the Notify Bearded Bot service. This is a Telegram service I'm using for my recording setup. And it says that freezer is getting warmer currently and it pulls the temperature from the freezer. As I mentioned, the fridge is almost the same except we are using different sensor and a different temperature. While this may not end up saving the energy, it can save you the cost of spoiled food. But let's look at saving the cost of energy. For this we have fridge door open. Yes, unfortunately you have to have door window sensor both on the fridge and on the freezer to be able to use this. But for example, if the fridge door contact changes to on, meaning that it's open for a period of two minutes or whatever period you want to specify, you would receive notification that the fridge door has been left open and please close it. This is a simple automation and what I really would recommend that you do one additional thing. Let's go to Visual Studio Code. In your configuration YAML file or separate alert file, if you have it as a separate file, add something like this. Fridge door, this will be the name of the alert. Name is fridge door. Done message, this is the message when the event is cleared, is fridge door is closed. Entity ID, this is the name of the binary sensor, fridge door contact, state is on, repeat 5 and skip first step false, notifiers bearded what? Why this alert is great? Because it would constantly, every 5 minutes, repeat the message that the fridge door is open, fridge door is open and it will do it until you fix the error, meaning you close the door. This is also good for the front door, for the garage door, for whatever door you forget that needs to be shut at all the time. But in this case, we are using this for fridge door. You can have one for the fridge and the other one for the freezer. 
and that way you really would be saving energy costs because the fridge would not try and cool down the air of the room where it is located instead it will keep the air inside the fridge or freezer cool as it needs to be one additional automation that i unfortunately do not have because i don't have ac is the automation that would cut off the power or turn the power off or turn the ac off if the door window is open for example this one is checking against the front door contact if it's open for a period of five minutes and if it is it is turning the switch called bit for controlling the ac off if you have some clever ac that you can control via the integration home assistant or if you have a standard AC and then you can use, for example, Tado AC controller to control it and hook it up and integrate it with Home Assistant, you can use that infrared blaster or a Tado AC controller or whatever you have to turn the AC off. Also, if you want to expand on this automation, the next step that you could potentially do is create a script that would trigger the AC on after this front door contact has been resolved or the window has been closed. In that case, it would then once again turn the AC on. Let's talk about dishwasher, washing machine and the dryer. Those are three devices that are power hungry. And unfortunately, we cannot save power in terms of how much power is consumed. Yes, we can lower the power, we can run the echo cycles and things like that. But still power will be used what we can do is we can optimize and use lower or off-peak tariff if available. So let's look at one example for the automation for, for example, washing machine that cannot be started or is disabled while the electricity is in the peak or higher priced electricity. Create automation, empty, add trigger, state, and since I have utility meter and I'm tracking peak and off-peak electricity, I have option to use select dot daily underscore energy. And I'm checking if it's currently in the peak or off-peak. If it's in a peak, I want to run this trigger. But since at this point we do not know if the washing machine is running, I will give it one extra hour meaning that it has to be in the peak state for one hour because maybe we want to wait for the current cycle to finish. We do not want to stop the washing machine if it's already washing things and it started during the off-peak tariff. In the conditions, if you are tracking the state of your washing machine, dishwasher or dryer, you can do that and check that. If you do and can check that, you can remove this for. And the action is very simple. When this trigger has been triggered and condition is met if we have condition we are turning off the washing machine by turning off the washing machine i'm really turning off the smart plug that means that even if you try to turn the machine on it will not run but we should also create one additional automation this one will allow us to run the washing machine or whatever power hungry device we have when the tariff changes to off peak when daily energy changes to off-peak, this time we do not have to wait for this. We just turn the washing machine on. Once again, we are not actually turning the washing machine. We are just powering on or turning on the smart plug where the washing machine is hooked up. One additional thing that I really do recommend to you is to go out on the YouTube. There will be a link in the video description and see this video from Kirill Pejanski. He is here explaining on how you can use the RPC add-on in Home Assistant to turn off your PC. Actually, also to turn it on. But in this case, I really would like to talk about the turn off functionality and the RPC because that way you can save up on a bit of energy. So go check out this video and don't forget to click thumbs up on his video if you like it. Once again, I'm sorry for the long video, but I really wanted to cover a couple of ideas and give you some kind of inspiration for you to go out and try to improve your home electricity usage. It's not the point that you turn off all of your devices. The idea is to have quality of life like you really want to have while still trying to control and cut a bit of corners and save on your electricity bill. 
if you yourself have any idea that you want to share with the community on how to improve or reduce or find a way to whatever do and lower the electricity cost, please leave the comment down in a comment section below. Also, you can go to the Discord server, which is always tagged in the video description, and you can leave your automation examples there. I really would like to see what you have done to save the energy. Don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss the next video where I will be talking about the heating. While we are already here, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has visited my merchandise store and bought a t-shirt, hoodie, mug, sticker or something because it also supports the channel. Thank you. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. I really and sincerely want to thank you for all of the support. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.